Uh, my name is Rocio Delgado. I live in Brooklyn, but I'm originally from Mexico. I'm a platform engineer at GitHub, and today I want to share with you some thoughts about database performance. So why do you think it's important about talking about performance? Active Record and ORM frameworks make it so easy to talk to a database so we can concentrate to build an amazing product. However, as we grow and we have more users and load and we, our code start getting more complex, we find ourselves finding queries that are duplicated in different parts of the code or optimizing for reads, pagination, counts, big tables, et cetera. Performance issues will affect your development cycle, your team morale, and ultimately your customers. But the real reason I care about this is because in my years of experience building backend applications, I've seen many fires. And this is me when I have to fix one of those. And most of the times is um, if I have some information up front, it could be prevented. So that is why it's so important for me, and, and I want to show you a little bit of uh, how we do it at GitHub. So there are three aspects that build a performance culture in any organization or team. So if you want to build that in your team, uh, you need to take care of these three points. The first one is that it has to be the entire team's responsibility. It's not just the engineers, the DVAs, the QA team, or it's from management, everybody's on the hook. It requires process and tooling, and you require infrastructure to support that. Automation tests, monitoring of development and other environments. And you need metrics. And not metrics of one thing, like page load time or things like that. You need to measure everything. IO, cache, individual um, queries, writes, reads, as much as you can. So enough talking. Let me show you some numbers. Uh, GitHub is in a Rails and MySQL application, I should say MySQL. Uh, it's 16 million users. Uh, we have 19 million repositories. This is at least the public repository. And uh, about 50 million issues. Uh, users do about 250,000 issues per week. So all this, plus all the data that these actions generate will make up for a very large database. Uh, and this is just public information or public repositories. So I'm going to share with you how we do process and tooling to, to be on top of application performance, um, database performance problems in our application. My favorite coworker, Huba, no offense to anybody, but he's super cool, is deployable everywhere. It's open source. It's built in Node.js and CoffeeScript, and you can use it too. So one of the things that we use with Huba, for instance, is graphing directly in Slack. This is uh, the graphite command. We can actually go to graphite, copy the command that can run in Hubert, and this is great uh, for onboarding people and actually teaching or showing um, when you're building a feature how it's going to be. You know, you have metrics right there. Anybody can see them. And because we're a remote company, so it's just available for everybody to use. One of my favorite aspects of Hubert is that you can customize anything, and uh, we have MySQL commands running Hubot. So for instance, if I'm, I'm building a feature and I want to know, you know, if I, should I add a new column, uh, I can see if the size of the tables, I don't need to ask a database administrator or anybody in the infrastructure team, I can do it myself, and I can make a decision whether it's a good idea or not to keep adding columns to the table, probably not. So I'm going to be using two examples of the most common problems that are, it doesn't matter what size of database you have or application, uh, but these are the most common database performance problems, and we probably all have experienced them. The first one is the infamous n plus 1 queries. We are, does anybody, everybody knows what an n plus 1 query is? Yeah. Cool. Well, an example of n plus 1 is when you have an association and uh, a parent-child relationship, and you issue one query for the, to get the parent, and then n being the number of children in the association. So the fix for this is very easy. We just need to eager load the association up front. Uh, we can do that with includes, or we have multiple. I'm not going to talk about the solution, because we can figure that out. But I'm going to talk about how we actually find them at scale. One thing that we use when you're developing a feature as an application engineer, um, we use PIC. There are other tooling available, but we use PIC in particular. It's also open source. It was uh, originally built at GitHub, 
And what it does, it puts a little top, uh, a bar at the top of your page, so you're developing a feature, you're working on this page. You can see uh, helpful information. You can, uh, we have, in this case, Elasticsearch, how much time it takes to call cache or features, but I'm interested in the SQL section because that's what I do. So we can see how many objects are being loaded. So this will probably give you an idea that there may be some smell here. And it also shows me the SQL that's being executed. So this just requires a little bit of instrumentation. It's super easy to do. And uh, as we can see here, we are issue many queries against the label. So uh, we have an M plus one, so we just need to find where, because we're in the page that executes the code, we can ju just go and fix it. There's also other things we can do, like instrumentation on the API serialization. You can count how many queries are executed at the beginning, and then how many queries are executed after. You can graph that out, so you can be creative. The point is that there's uh, tools available to do that. And the second most common problem is poor indexing, and this is my favorite one. Um, it comes in different flavors. First, lack of indexes, so if you can guess where the index was added there. Uh, this is another tool that we use. It's not open source. It's uh, Vivid, Vivid Cortex. It is like, I don't know, maybe you use New Relic or any other tool. Um, also, unused indexes, right? So when we change how a feature works, how a page um, behaves, it may be that we don't longer need an index, and they will hurt our performance when writing. Sometimes we tend to optimize for reads, but also we need to take care of uh, writing. And having too many indexes in the database, um, it's not good. So we have this, another command running Hubot, MySQL index stats, you pass the, number, the name of the table, and this is wholly underneath uh, the performance schema for MySQL, but I'm sure there is another thing for any other database, so you can just customize it. So we have here that this index issues and the table issues on X column is no longer used, so we can go ahead, whatever is the process, to remove it. And too many indexes. And I'm looking at you, Postgres guy, sorry, but there is a, we can add, there's index merge on uh, Postgres available, and it works, and it's, it's great, but it's not a best practice to add an index on every column just because we can do it, right? It, as, I, as I said, eventually you will see the, the penalty on writes. So what is a good index strategy? Build indexes for performance for your critical queries. Don't try to fix everything. It's gonna be impossible to do it up front. Iterate, see what are the most critical issues that you have. That's why you need the tooling, so you can identify which tables are the most uh, critical in terms of reads and writes, so you can fix one by one. Also try to fix uh, or add indexes that uh, will help more than one query. So in this example I have, um, because I'm suggesting a multi-column index, uh, I'm choosing repository and user ID because I have an equality condition the repository, but I don't have in the second query an equality condition for user. So it will stop working as soon as it hits the non-equality condition, and this index will help me use for other variations, right? If I only query on repository, uh, it will still work. Prefer to extend an index instead of adding a new one. As I, as I said, too many indexes is a problem, so try to take a step back. There is another command that we have that you can see all the, as I show it, all the indexes, so you can um, see it right there and try to do, extend a new one, sorry, extend an existing one instead of adding a new one and favor multi-column indexes, impartial indexes, uh, if you can. So how do we identify when we need a, a new index or when we have slow queries? Usually that's something database administrators do or they, the tooling lives in the infrastructure side. Uh, we use Haystack, it's our exception tracking tool. Uh, there is an engineering blog post that I have a link at the end uh, so you can read more about it. And we use it for everything. And this is application side, uh, which means that we can customize what a slow query means. So we can, you know, we can say half a second is slow for us, or two seconds, or 10 seconds. So we grab the query, we can see where it comes from, uh, and, and then we can execute the explain in Qbot. So that's why Qbot's my favorite. So we have the execution plan right there. 
We can see in this case that I'm, I'm querying on close at, but I'm having an index on user ID and created at. So I, I do need an index, or it seems like I do need an index, or I need to write my query. So once I have the execution plan and I have a plan with, to add an index, it's really hard to actually test it if you don't have the data that is in production. You cannot never pretend that you will have the same execution plan in your local. Many things will, will uh, depend for the execution, execution plan. So what we do is we have tools available. Again, Hubert comes to the rescue and we can clone a table to staging so we can do testing there. And uh, maybe this is not available for you, but that is the point about having infrastructure to support the tooling. Once we, cl we clone the issue to, uh, the, the, in this case, the issues table to staging environment, we can test it, we can experiment and validate our plan. So in this case, it's a successful. And well, finally, as if you don't have this available to you, uh, you can use science. And <laughs> what I mean by that is Scientist, which is a Ruby library that is for, for refactoring critical paths. And in this case, I have a, it's, it's using the index hints because MySQL supports them, but I mean, you can be creative and just have a different, a different query in the experiment control and in the, so it's gonna use the first one and it's gonna try the second one only for comparing the performance of the index because that is my use case. And it, uh, scientists will allow you to uh, put this code in production if it's available to you and enable it for a percentage of your users. So you can test only in a percentage of your use base and you have a graph like this where it shows, well indeed the new index that I propose is much better or slightly better, but better after all. Okay, so the key to database performance is to have limits to be on top of what you're doing. So limit round trips to the database, limit um, pages on your pagination, do as much limited of your users uh, that you can do. And also be mindful of adding new columns. Now what, we have this information. Um, I hope it's, some of this is useful for you. Try to incorporate something in your team. Talk to your team about performance. It's not just engineering work, it's everybody's. Um, it's for your own good and set achievable goals. Start small and simple. You, can't, you, ha you don't have to do everything and sometimes you need to slow down to speed up at the end. The most important thing, oh, everything's fine. Thank you. Awesome, thank you so much, Rocio.